Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiverr Flux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this cute little Mary Dishmith cloth. This is a fun dishcloth you can stitch up for the holidays, although you can really make it in any colors that you like. We're gonna be making a corner to corner granny square. So we're gonna be starting at the bottom here, working our way up and increasing. And then when we go to decrease, we're gonna switch colors to make like this fun two color color block effect. And then we're gonna start bringing it in. And finally, we're gonna to top it off with this optional hanging loop. So this is a really easy project. We're gonna do it stitch by stitch, some very basic stitches involved. Now the finished dishcloth measures about 12 inches by 12 inches. However, when we go through and learn how to make this dishcloth, I am gonna show you how to customize the width and the, the height uh, so you can get really any color or, or any size rather that you like. I wanted a nice big oversized uh, dishcloth for mine, but you can really make this any size you like. So let's get started. For this project, you're gonna need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to get the size that you want. We're gonna be using a six millimeter J crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey. I'll put the link down below in case you're wondering about this hook or wanna get one of your own. And our yarn, we're gonna be using some cotton dishcloth yarn. And I picked some like traditional holiday colors, some bright green, bright red, and some white, but you can make this really in any colors that you like. So I grabbed my first color. So this is gonna be a corner to corner granny square. So what we're gonna do for the increase portion of our square, we're gonna do it in one color. And then when we come back in to do the decrease portion of our square, we're gonna do it in a second color. So it'll be a nice like two-toned, um, fun little dishcloth to make. This is very easy and we're gonna use some really basic stitches. So I have my hook and my yarn, my first color for the increase part. So let me just zoom in a little bit more so you can see this up close. And what we're gonna do to begin is chain six. So we're gonna put a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Next, what we're gonna do is the chain six that I mentioned. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then what we're gonna do is work a slip stitch into the farthest chain from the hook to create a ring. So this is gonna be worked flat in rows, but when you do this corner to corner granny square, um, you have to start with a ring and you'll work your stitches into that. So it's kind of different for starting a flat square, but we're gonna do it this way. And it'll make sense as we make it. Okay, so work your slip stitch, go all the way to that first chain that you made, that farthest chain from the hook, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Now we have our ring that we're gonna be working our stitches into. Also, we're gonna hold this tail along the edges we work and then that will weave that in as we go along. Okay, so for row one, what we're gonna do is chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then in the center of this ring, we're gonna work three double crochets. Now this chain four is gonna count as a double crochet chain one, just as a side note. So we're gonna work three double crochets into the center of the ring. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, so that's one double crochet, two double crochet, and three double crochet, okay? And then what we're gonna do is chain one, and then work one more double crochet into the center of the ring. Just like that, okay? So remember that chain four at the beginning, how I said it counted as a double crochet chain one. We're kind of mimicking what we've done on the other side. All right, let's move on to row two. For row two, what we're gonna do is chain four, one, two, three, four, turn our work, and we're gonna locate that first chain one space. So that big space you see at the beginning of the row is that chain one space. And in that chain one space, we're gonna work three double crochet, one, two, and three. Let me get a little bit more yarn here. And then we're going to chain one, 
And then we're going to hop over that group of three double crochets here and go into that last, that turning chain space at the end of the row. And we're going to work three double crochet, one, two, three, then chain one, and then one double crochet on that same space. Okay? So row two is complete. It's already starting to have that granny look. This is going to be the bottom corner of our square. All right, so for row three, what we're going to do, now row three is what we'll be repeating uh, over and over again to get the uh, increase part, okay? So for row three, what we're going to do, once again, is chain four. One, two, three, four, turn your work. Um, now when you're doing these corner to corner projects, I always like to keep my tail intact and not weave it in right away. So that way when I turn my work and need to position my piece, I always know that tail is facing me when I turn, so, so I know I'm in the right spot. Okay, so in this first chain one space, once again, we're going to work three double crochet chain one. So one, two, three, and then we're going to chain one, and then we're going to go into each space across. Now for this row, we only have one because we haven't made it very big yet, but in each one of these chain one spaces in the middle, what we're going to do is work three double crochet chain one in those spaces. So one, two, three, and then chain one. And then what we're going to do is in the last space of the row here, remember that turning chain space, we're going to work three double crochet. So one, two, three, then chain one, and then a double crochet all in that same space to finish up the row. Okay, just like that. So we're starting to get a nice little triangle. And then what you can do, what I like to do after I work a couple of rows, is to sort of just straighten it up and it'll start to look like the bottom corner of a square, okay? So what we're gonna do next is repeat row three over and over and over again until your square is about half the size you want it to be. So keep repeating in, the, in this first color before we switch colors. And what we're gonna do is work this row over and over and over until your square, it's gonna look like a, a wedge or a triangle, but you want it to be about half the size of, your, of the dishcloth size that you want it to be. So uh, another thing I wanted to point out is, remember we worked in the middle, we worked that three double crochet chain one. Each time you work a row, you're gonna have more of those, okay? So this row, we have two of them. The next row, you'll have three of them. The next row, you'll have four of them. So it'll keep increasing in both width and height as well, okay? So keep repeating row three, and then we're gonna rejoin in a few minutes, and um, I'm gonna show you how to do, not only switch colors to our second color, but also decrease and start to finish up our square as well. All right, just working that last stitch of our row. And now our increase part is finished. Now I wanted to point out, if we grab our ruler, I wanted mine to be nice and oversized. So when you're done, you can sort of shape it up, make sure your corner's nice and uh, 90 degrees at an angle here. But I wanted to make mine a nice big dishcloth. So I'm gonna take mine, it's roughly 12 inches across, okay? So now we're ready for the decrease. Now if you want to, you can stick with the same color or if you have a cotton yarn that's variegated, that's fun too. You could just kind of stick with the same thing. But we're gonna switch colors and do the decrease in one part, okay? Now, another really important thing about working a corner to corner granny square is that before you decrease, make sure you have an even number of rows before you begin the decrease. This is very important. So what you can do is count. Um, you can count the little groups across here and that will tell you how many rows that you have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So we do have an even number. Okay, so what we wanna do now is grab our scissors and snip the old color. Then we're gonna grab our other color and then take your yarn that you just cut wrap it around the hook, pull it through that loop, okay? 
Then we're going to take our new color. And what we want to do here is in that last stitch that we worked where that knot is, let me just zoom right on in so you can see that a little bit better. What we're going to do is in that last stitch worked here, take your hook back in there and you're going to take the new yarn color and hook it right on and just pull it through and tie it right on. Okay. And we're going to take care of all these ends when we get done. Okay, now get your little ends out of the way. And then we're going to begin the first row of the decrease portion of our dishcloth, okay? So bring up a loop. And then what you're gonna do is chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna turn our work. And remember we have this tail in place and it's still gonna point towards us when we turn. And then what we wanna do this time, because we're decreasing, is see this chain space here? Instead of working anything into that, we're gonna skip it, okay? And then we're going to, in each one of these chain one spaces across, we're gonna do what we've been doing, work three double crochet, chain one. So in that next space, that chain one space, work three double crochet, one, two, three, and chain one. Hop over to the next space and do the same thing. Three double crochet, one, two, three, and chain one. Next space, three double crochet, chain one, one, two, three, chain one, and we're just doing this all the way across. Now it's really fun when you add that second color, it starts to look really extra festive. Okay, so we're just gonna do this all the way across. In each one of these chain one spaces, work three double crochet, chain one, and then when we get to, towards the end of this row, almost to the end, we'll rejoin, and I'm gonna show you how to finish off the row so we can also decrease on that side. So what it's gonna do, uh, we worked outward and upward, and then we're going to work back inward to make that square. Coming up to the end of the row, I'm just gonna work that last group. And then to finish off the row, we're going to work just one double crochet in the topmost chain of this turning chain. So remember our turning chain from before, we're gonna locate that topmost chain and just work a double crochet right into that. Okay, so to finish your square, what we're gonna do is keep repeating this decrease row that we just did over and over and over until you just get a top point. So just right before we get to that top point, we're gonna rejoin and I'm gonna show you how to finish it off. And we are going to add a little hanging loop if you'd like to add a hanging loop to your dishcloth as well. So keep repeating this decrease row that we just did. You can back up the video if you need to or put it in the slow motion feature and we will rejoin once we get to that top point. Okay, we've worked a bunch of rows and now we're almost at the tippy top point here. So what we need to do is chain four. One, two, three, four. Turn our work, same thing we've been doing. And then remember we're gonna skip this first space and then go to the next chain one space here and work our three double crochet. One, two, three, chain one, and then work a double crochet into that topmost chain, just like that, okay? So now we're at the top here, sort of at the top, we're almost at the top, that's actually right over here. So what you wanna do is turn your work and we're gonna slip stitch over to the center of this group here, just like that. Now we're actually at the, the top. So the top would be that last group of three double crochets we worked, the very center double crochet of that one, okay? So now, if you wanna add a hanging loop, you can. So, we'll so to do our hanging loop, we're gonna chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we're gonna come back down to that same stitch, 
and work a slip stitch. Insert the hook into that stitch, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on our hook, just like that. And then you can cut that yarn, wrap it around your hook, and bring it through the loop. Okay, and now you have a nice little hanging loop. If you want your hanging loop to be a little bit bigger, you can work more chains, but I like that size, that seems to work. Okay, so let's zoom back out and we can look at our beautiful dishcloth. It really takes not a lot of time at all. So you can all the sides nice and straight. And the last thing we need to do, now this is completely reversible, so it doesn't matter what side is what, um, but the last thing we need to do is weave in some ends. So what we wanna do, we have a couple here where we switched colors and where we began and ended. So just thread your tapestry needle. And then I have a red tail here. So I'm gonna try my best to keep it in this red section of my work. And I have a knot, I'm gonna try and pull that through so it's not as obvious. And then we're gonna take our needle and I like to go in one direction and then come back in the other direction. Now, um, this is nice and open, so it can dry pretty easily. So you wanna, when you weave in your ends, you wanna be careful to kind of stay in the middle of those stitches there. Okay, and then we can just trim. So all of our ends are woven in, everything looks great. So that is how you crochet the Mary Dishmas cloth. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.